Welcome back to Women Meets Motherhood. Um, today we have an awesome show, very informative, but also um, we have a guest who has an amazing sense of humour and attitude as a mother of seven. Um, for, due to the nature of some of the topics that we're going to be talking about, the sensitivity around them, um, we've decided to keep our guest's um, identity anonymous. Um, but we do have um, an awesome woman who is going to share a lot with us and we've got, there's a lot to learn, a lot to learn. Um, so first of all, the first question I have for our guest, um, Sarah, is what's it like being a mum of seven children? Fantastic, in a way. <laughs> in a way. <laughs> Which way? In a way. Yeah, help us out. Yeah, like the helpers, yeah, true. Um, the helpers and, you know, their um, sense of, loving as a loving children um i've i've raised them all to be a good um people in a way and um they always come back and you know know where their mother stands for them mm -hmm. so that's that's one of the um one of the things that i think gives me the joy of it of yeah. having them and uh, I've always go back to, to, to have another one because it's always the bonding, you know, you have with a child as a mother. Mm. Yeah. It's, so when you got married, it was seven children always on the cards? No. Oh. <laughs> no. So how did you get from baby one, <laughs> one to baby two, seven? seven. Uh, uh, well, it takes two to time. <laughs> <laughs> No, it, it just came along. Uh, my husband always loved having uh, a large family and he was one of seven as well. Mm. So um, he always said, I wish to follow my father's footstep. <laughs> yeah. But so you knew I, I never. Into yeah. <laughs> I, I, at the beginning of our marriage, he didn't say it. <laughs> he didn't let you in on that he one. He didn't say it. Yeah, true. Um, but um, it went along. I mean, um, I would say uh, when I was number four, I told myself, two boys, two girls, I'm blessed, that's it. Mm. And um, a member of the fa our, our family said to me, you can never say it's enough until the Lord himself says <laughs> it's enough. <laughs> so when you were pregnant with number what you found it pregnant number yeah. five, what was going through your mind at that time? Um, well, it was a trick. Uh, from my uh, from my husband in a way, if I say, it. Um, he was flying off to see his mother, and uh, at that time I had a contraception that I was using as as a coil, and he said, if anything ever happens to me and if I die, and I do not knowing that I had my success of the number seven that I had, seven children, brothers and sisters that I had, um, it would be so. Could you please? I would ask you as a please, um, let's, let's just, because at that time, I think my daughter was five herself. And he said, she's old enough to understand now and I, I need that baby in the house. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, if you want to raise him or her, whatever comes out, that's fine. I, I, and then I just removed my coil and then off it went again. So you're a fertile woman, you are. Exactly. Yeah. So can you just give us the age gaps between your um, children? My first ones, uh, there's um, 11 months and something days. Um, so for in four days, they're the same age. Wow. wow. So yeah. for four days. For four so. days. In December 17th, he, he turns 27. And on the 13th of December, she turns 26. But he, she would be 26 with him for four days. For four days. Do they call that like Irish twins when they're the same age for a Yeah. And they grew up loving each other oh, so nice. well. And How did then, your body take that close of a gap? Yeah. Uh, it scared me in a way. Mm. Um, the first time I found out I was pregnant, I didn't need to go on a bus, but I went on a bus because I was my mind was in a, in a miles away not knowing where i'm going when the doctors told me you either pregnant five months pregnant or you're having twins because how big my tummy was you know, but did you not it? notice or was it that you just had a baby yeah i just had a baby i thought it was the hormones of all this and things with even that was quite a very slim person um and i didn't feel any movement i didn't feel anything yeah. i thought 
and the pressure of having just had a baby and you know constantly you know um, yeah. hands on um the first person to real make me realize that i was pregnant was my brother who came in for one day for a surprise and he came in and he said i could swear i could have said you were pregnant again i was like what are you talking about i'm not pregnant no and then putting the question in my head thinking could it be? Would it be possible? You know, and then I went to see the doctor, and the doctor said, "You're either pregnant with twins, or you have um, a five months pregnant." And you're five months pregnant. And I was five months pregnant. Wow. wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then between number two and number three, uh, two years. Okay. So it's like so one year, two years, three years, four years. <laughs> I'm becoming scared <laughs> and then I'm just, you know sort of thinking uh, oh now it's gone you know mm. that scaredness is gone yeah so as, as a mother of seven yeah because you have um you have a lot of experience in this what what's the best gap in your mind in just in your opinion um for my number five and number six what it's 80, 80 years gap. That was okay. <laughs> that was okay for me. <laughs> I, had, I, I enjoyed a bit of it because she, that she went to uh, school yeah. and then, you know, uh, everything. And then I was by myself, so back to normal back again, again. Yeah. you know, you know, that's it. The rest of a bit older. Was, yeah. And now, ah, thank God. I'm thinking, I'm not thinking no more, you know, babies, <laughs> no more. And I feel sorry for people who are either pregnant or having children right now. You, you've had your share. I've had my share, but honestly, but then I think, oh my God, everyone is blessed with a child. That's, yeah. the, that's the best gift you can mm -hmm. ever have. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyone. So you took an eight year gap and yeah. you came back with two months. So between them, how, how, many, how many, what's the gap between the two youngest? Oh, 19 months. Okay, so you want yeah. to back again. Um, I asked my doctors if I can have the SNP when I had number six. Yeah. And they said because it was really late stages that I asked to have it, um, to have no more children. Um, they said you have to be in focus in the right oh, mind, in the right set of mind to do so. Apparently when you're pregnant, your brain shrinks and you're not thinking <laughs> right. <laughs> You're not thinking right. So um, I said, I swear to God, I'll be back on this table because they were, they, they were, um, I had C-section with her. And uh, I, I told them, if you don't do it now, I'll be coming back to this. And, they, and, I, I, and I went back. <laughs> and my husband didn't, he didn't want it anymore. He said, let's, let's just stop at this. I was like, nope. Because to raise one child, it's harder mm. than to raise seven. Yeah. Wow. What I've noticed is, because you have to please this child, you have to have a companion for them, you have to talk to them, you have to do look. But now they can sit together, they can mm -hmm. understand each other, they can entertain themselves. So I didn't want her to go through that. I thought one more, and then, somehow I knew that it's gonna, she's, he's gonna be a boy. And then- Because you have boy girl, boy girl, boy girl, boy girl, girl, boy girl yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's- So you said yeah. you had, I think a C-section for number six. Three. Oh, no, I had I, number three C-section because he was quite very big. Okay. So yeah. What was the my, that was my first C-section. Okay. And then it was three years after. And then I, I became pregnant. Then I had a normal delivery. So the first yeah. one was... First normal delivery. Second one was normal delivery. And then I had a C-section. And then I had two more normal deliveries. And then two more C-sections. So you had three C-sections yeah. and four normal deliveries. Yeah. Wow. So I have experienced both ways you can have a child. Oh, wow. Because we've spoken <laughs> to women who've had, even Michelle having a murder C-section, yeah. like, people who've had elective C-section where they decide that they want to have a C-section. Yeah. Um, and obviously people who have had, myself, Jenny, have had normal vaginal births, but mm. having them, your body going from vaginal to well, C-section, yeah, yeah. how, how, how has that impacted your actual body? Um, I think the best thing to have is normal, for, uh, mm. normal delivery. Mm. That's because nature, way of you know reacting and putting things together mm. while we already have the c-section what i experienced it was um i had you know what, what they what they call it after birth mm -hmm. the pain it's more stronger with the c-section mm. yeah 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 so you feel yeah. so you, coming back especially because you had it at number three so you had two other kids yeah. you had it at number seven and eight it, you had yeah. five other kids it's yeah How, that obviously this is hard you have you have your children who are still yeah in life. in life yeah um 
it was always support of my fa my husband yeah. sorry um he was full hands on um and he loves children mm. to bits um he always had to do everything with me by my side mm. and um i would i would go to sleep and i would not be woken up for no reason <laughs> whatsoever <laughs> Even if that child has a temperature, I would have to walk He would deal with it. Yeah, he would deal with it because I, I would be all day. Yeah. So yeah. longer hours, yeah. I'll be standing, cooking, cleaning, yeah. you know, you name it, everything mm -hmm. that a woman needs to do in the house, I'll be doing it while he either sleeps or goes to yeah. work or whatever. So anything he will do at nighttime because I need that good eight hours sleep yeah. to affect again. Tell them to again. <laughs> <laughs> we need the good eight exactly. hours sleep. Yeah. But that's a blessing. No, honestly, that's actually yeah, a blessing it because is, it is. obviously if you're if you're at home with all those kids and you're doing school runs, you're doing this, you're yeah. doing this, and then for, for then you to have a newborn to wake up, it's like I don't know. Actually, I can't actually yeah. fathom what you're doing. There's times that uh, my my doctor would say you're not allowed to drive for the first six weeks. Yeah. I was driving the first three days. I had to get. I had to left. Yeah. I had to go on, you know, and doing the hoovering. I remember with my uh, first C-section because I didn't know so much of it. Mm. Um, that uh, my womb opened. Your scar. Uh, yeah, my scar because I was doing the hoovering. I was oh doing this. Gosh. I was doing, it, and then I have two little ones, and then I also raised two of my sisters who oh, were really wow. young. Wow. Um, at that time, they were with me as well. So I had to do all this, and then um, realized that I just felt a little bit of wetness on the side, and mm. then I need to go and see the doctor, and the doctor realized my scar is opening. And then they had to reburn their skin and then put it back together. But then afterward, that was a lesson for me, mm. not to push it so much. Yeah, because true. it's not the same as having a normal delivery as a child, yeah. Even, you know. Yeah. Wow. Oh, so let's just, I wanted to also look at something else. So you're of East African heritage. Yes. And how did that play into um, you? Did, were there, uh, there are cultural things that go along with that. What yes. cultural things impacted you and your marriage and even having children being from that background? Well, within the community, um, um, it's normal. Large families are normal. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember once we went to um, Short Star program between, I think we were about three women in the group and each of us had five. So literally we took the whole coach just by those three <laughs> women, you know? <laughs> So short starts like, my God, what's going on? But then we came to a, a country which adapts different yeah. to where we came from. Um, because back home, five is nothing. Seven is nothing. Mm. Seven I'm is nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Literally nothing. Um, they will look at me and think, um, oh, you only had seven? <laughs> <laughs> only seven? You know? But... Um, they will have it, uh, somebody I know, I think she was born either late 80s, early 90s, and she's already have 13 children. What? So that's like my age. Yeah, yeah exactly. 13, 13 children. And she's, and she's back home. Her. And when you look at her, you don't think she had even had one child. <laughs> wow. And her daughter is looking after with her, helping her she to look to. after. And so, yeah. so that's the normality of the culture you're from. The culture, yeah. You have yeah. a lot of children. Yeah. And, and comparing it to back home, if you were back home, what kind of support would you have that you may oh. not have here? Oh, my goodness. Uh, cousins, mm. maids, um, you name it. it. They would be there to look after. You will not even see. You will give birth to that child, but you will not raise it. The community will raise it with you. Uh, the family will raise it with you. They, they, they then from there onwards, they start working, mm. you know, and seeing after, after and they themselves will be looking after you. Mm. So all you there is actually to produce. Mm. <laughs> then, did that ever cross your mind thinking, if I went back home, I would have more support. Why, why, why should I suffer through doing it here? Yeah. Um, when you've been so long away. away, now, let's say, for example, I go back home. I would not walk 
same walk they're walking, I will not talk the same walk they're talking, everything would be different. I will be realized within a second I am not from around oh, there. Yeah. It'll be hard too. And hard. But then I will not fit here either. Yeah. Because the stigma of, you know, different uh, hijab or whatever and then large families and do you feel like there's a stigma around large families have you experienced people well when i say oh uh, i raised seven they're like oh my god you raised seven how did you do that yeah. what made you didn't you know about the uh, <laughs> 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 so things like that you know and you question yourself i mean my children probably might not even have the same number I had. Mm -hmm. They're probably thinking, because this is where they grew up, this is where they see seen, their mentality mm -hmm. is here. Mm -hmm. So maybe, even, maybe, I will get two grandchildren from, you know, all of them. <laughs> 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 so that's, that's the way it is, yeah. But we also um, want to talk about something else culturally. Yeah. So FGM. Yeah. Um, but I think because of time, you want yeah. to ask another question? No, no, that's fine, mm. that's fine. We'll, mm. yeah, yeah, so I'm thinking that we'll do a part two yeah. um, and we can focus maybe around FGM, yeah. what that means, mm. how does it affect women in the community and then also how specifically it affected you, you know, the <laughs> with, with the activity, yeah. with the yeah. love making, but yeah. then also with the pushing. And, yeah. And so yeah. it would be interesting to hear all of that too. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, so please come back guys we will be back and put with a part two um so stay tuned and don't forget to comment like and subscribe <laughs>